And I want to introduce to you what God has packaged and prepared for you and I. He may be somebody you know. He may be somebody you've heard him speak. But every day that God gives something to you and I, it is fresh. And it is conducive for the day. Hallelujah. There is nothing that God gives that is in the old. Whatever that is, when you breathe today, it is not the same breathing for tomorrow. Every day you are breathing, but they are fresh breath that you receive every day. So anytime God gives you a word, whether it's coming from the same vessel or it's coming from a different vessel, it is something new God has for you for that day. Hallelujah. Jesus won't lie. That's why he said he's giving us each day our daily bread. For every single day, he will give you the newness of the day and that which is sufficient for you and I. And so this is a servant of God whom you all know that he has been obedient to the things of God and he has worked diligently with God. And so I don't want you to give a, any opportunity for the Spirit of God to be disturbed. What do I mean by that? Focus your attention on the word. Focus, when somebody even opens his door, don't turn your head. Just put POP on your neck and look straight and take the word. Those of you who are also watching, I want to encourage you, tune out everything around you, silence every phone, and make sure that the word that is coming, you are receiving it with all its totality. Hallelujah. The Bible says that receive the engrafted word. Receive it. Receive it with all that is within you. And so this morning, help me welcome my friend, the head pastor of Prayer Temple, Suhum, Ghana, Reverend Samuel Akoto, as he ministers the word of God to you and I. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's a Ghana man. I, I think a Ghana man. So get yourself ready. <laughs> uh, he came here with that able support, but he himself will do that introduction. Hallelujah. God bless you, man of God. God bless you also. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Now you look too dull. Come on. Celebrate Jesus. You are in the best place. The best place. This is where God wants you to be this morning. So you are not sinning at all. So rejoice. So clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, you can take your seat. Take your seat for a moment. I have come to Shiloh. I call this place Shiloh. It's a place where God is. So when we are in the forest, so we, number 22, 40, okay. Yeah, you can see the beauty of the place. Please, can you turn to somebody and just give the person a smile? You know, there was some um, tree, you are late, come on, come on, and so provocation and, and hurt and all kind of, so just give the person a smile to bring uh, uh, down the tension. Hallelujah. Please, people of God, help me thank your pastor and the leadership of Empowerment Temple for believing, for believing in, in this edu uh, un uh, educated fisherman. Always try to bring him here to come and preach. God bless you. And wonderful people, wonderful leaders here. I say God bless you. Today, I'm not here alone. I'm here with a professor, uh, one of the lecturers in Central University, my beloved wife. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to tell you one of her names is Utukonye, and I'm Utukoche. Please welcome her. Hey, can you come and say hello? Say hello to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please have your seat. Hallelujah. Amen. The best thing we can have in life is Christ. Hallelujah. Um, we thank you for accepting us and making us feel at home. Anytime we come around, we, we, we don't feel like strangers. We feel at home. So we are very, very grateful.
for the reception you granted all the time. Amen. And like I said, this is the best place you can be. Hallelujah. Maybe you've been serving God for a while now, and maybe you've been expecting him to do something for you. Don't lose hope. Hallelujah. Because the God we serve, Bible says he is what? The rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. He is faithful. So continue seeking him. When we go back, let's look at the word diligent and the various synonyms. Let's ask ourselves whether we are diligently seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. And we can look at the antonyms as well. And let's see how we are serving our God. Because I can tell you, for God to bring us this far, it is by his grace. And I see his favor upon my life. And I see his reward coming. Some have come. Standing here is one of them. And more are coming. So, by my testimony, know that your God will do it for you. And so, serve him diligently. Amen. Come on, celebrate Otukunye. Amen, amen. So the word from the professor to you is diligence. God rewards diligence. When we serve him sincerely, committed, dedicated, devoted, he remembers you. Because even the worldly people, they know how to reward committed lawyer workers. And if they can do that, do you think they are wiser than this God that created us? People of God, let's do all that we can. And let's serve this God. To me, the only person that I'll kill myself for is this God. Enough is enough to kill myself for other human beings. Because he rewards diligence. God bless you for taking that. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. Here we are, your people. We dance, we praise, we pray, and we intercede. And we say, Lord, we have given our offerings and worship you with our substances. It's time for you to talk to us. Lord, with open heart, we are ready. Speak. Thy servant heareth. Touch our heart with your word. Let somebody be encouraged this morning through your word. Let healing take place. Let joy be restored. Let hope be restored. As your word being heard by your people. Touch these lips of clay. Take over this weak vessel. Use me to comfort somebody. Use me to give hope. Let somebody walk out of this church auditorium this morning with confidence and assurance that with Christ, I can rise again. With Christ, I will get to the place that you, Jehovah God, you have ordained for me. Father, take over. Holy Spirit, come. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. First scripture that we'll put on the screen this morning is Proverbs 10, 22. And then we'll start from that area. Amen. Proverbs 10, 22 reads, shall we all read together, people of God? The blessing of the Lord makes rich and he added no sorrow with it. Amen. Out of this scripture, I pick my title, the title of my message, The Power of God's Blessing. The Power of God's Blessing. How many of you want to be blessed? Maybe I should have started, how many of you want to be cursed? Hallelujah. How many of you want to be blessed? What else? You don't want to be blessed? You don't want to be blessed? How many of you want to be blessed? So that I say, God bless you. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord makes one word rich. 
So this morning, I want to talk about the blessing of God. The blessing of God is so important that a man in the Bible called Jacob do everything to get the blessing. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. And when the blessing of God comes upon your life, certain things happen. Number one, when the blessing of God comes upon your life, you have a new name. Hallelujah. A change of name. You remember the story of Jacob in Genesis chapter 32? The Bible said he had an encounter with God. Hallelujah. I don't want to bother myself so much reading it. But you go and search the scripture. Genesis chapter 32. The blessing of God may give you a word, a new name. Changes your name. Bible says he wrestled with Adisi from uh, Genesis chapter 32 from verse 24. If, if you want us to read it, let's go quickly. Because uh, here you people monitor people's time too much. I was at New York last weekend. The guy was following me. He said, Pastor, you, you preach this 31 minutes. You're supposed to preach 25. I said, ah. All right. Let's go. All this one guy is taking my time. Uh, and, Jacob, and Jacob was left alone. And then wrestled a man with him. Until the break of the day. Let's go. Read on. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Let's move on. And he said, let me go. That the man said, let him go after he touched him up. And he got wounded. But he said, I will not let you go. For the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Hallelujah. Oh, how many of you want to be like Jacob? All right, let's move on. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. The next one. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But Israel, for as a prince, has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Hallelujah. The next point. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost act after my name? And he blessed him there. Somebody, and he blessed him there. Hallelujah. He had an encounter with God. Humanity had an encounter with what? Divinity. And there was a what? A change of name. Certainly so shall it be. And no, it, because this God that we serve, he does not what? Change. When you have an encounter with God, there will be a change. Hallelujah. He wrestled with God. And what was, was he, what was he looking for? He was looking for God's blessing. Hallelujah. That's all. Because David knows what the blessing can do. When blessing of God comes upon your life, first thing that it does, he changes your name. Praise God. His name was changed from Jacob to what? Israel. Israel means the prince of God. Nice name. Nice name. There was another man also who had an encounter with God. And his own was in the New Testament. His name is what? Apostle Paul. You remember on the road to Damascus? He had an encounter with God. I think you go and search for that scripture. Hallelujah. He was Saul. But after he had an encounter with God, when humanity means divinity, definitely there will be a change. I don't know your relationship with God. It matters a lot. 
And I believe that somebody now from today should be crying, Lord, I want to see you. And anyone who make that request, you will see God. The second thing that comes into your life when you, 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 get, you, you have an encounter with God, or the blessing of God comes upon your life. Now I want us to look at the, uh, this man's attitude again. You'll see the way he was so concerned about the blessing. Ah, if you are wrestling with somebody, the person touch you and you get wounded. And now you are not, you are not walking like this. And the person said, let me go. If it does, the Lord should put tear in you. David, Jacob said, no. I'm looking for something. And that is what I will go in, I'm going for. And I will not stop. It doesn't matter what it costs. And it happened. He got the blessing. The Bible says, and the Lord blessed him there. There was a particular place. But we'll come to that. First, second, when you get the blessing of God, it makes you do well against all odds. It makes you do well against all odds. Do they understand my English odds at all? Hello? Is it okay? You understand the word odd? Please put it on the screen. Where are you? Where are these things? I, I, I don't want to spell it here. You spell it. Against all odds. Whatever try to come against you, you will break through. When God bless you, hallelujah, it said, What God has blessed, no man can curse. He told Abraham, blessing, I will bless you. Hallelujah. And I, as I bless you now, whosoever bless you shall be blessed. Blessing of God, Make you do well against all odds. Jacob went to his uncle Laban. Laban reduces his what? His wages how many times? Ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. His salary, instead of when, when you are working, should I mean your employer should be increasing your salary. After Jacob, his salary keep on what? Decreasing. Keep on decreasing. But even in that, he left the place with double family. Hallelujah. And his, oh, he himself said in what in the in, in chapter 2, he said, I crossed this Jordan with a staff. And here I'm going home with double families. When God blesses you, no one can curse you. It doesn't matter what come at you. You will make it. So go for the blessing. Do all that you can't and get God's blessing. Let God's blessing be upon your family. So do everything what you must do to make, to attract God's blessing. I will tell you later. Hallelujah. Number four. Is, do I reach number four already? All right. Number three. Next, oh, when you when God's blessing comes upon you, it makes you fear. It makes you face what you fear. You face what you fear. Jacob was afraid of his brother Esau when he was going back home. Hallelujah. And he strategized. You read Genesis chapter 32. You get more of that. And he strategized. He arranged the family according to the way he loved the people. Hallelujah. He put his first wife, where you know his name, her name, uh, 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 Rachel's sister, the one that she didn't pray for. When he was going to, the, to Laban, he saw a lady, and the heart communicated to him that that is she. Hallelujah. And when she got, he got there, he asked Laban, what can, how much uh, this thing, uh, clothes or money should I bring so that you give me Rachel to marry? And they say, oh, here, we don't do that. Now. You just take care of my sheep seven years. How many years have you worked for your father-in-law? <laughs> seven years. And when it was time, the man changed, has changed the whole thing. They said, we don't marry senior, uh, junior before senior. So you have to marry this one. So if you need Rahel still, work for another seven years. So actually, Jacob worked for how many years? 14 years for his June wife. 
that tells you how determined this man is. And he did it. Clap for Jacob for me. When Jacob, Jacob meant to do something, he said, this thing, I want to get it. That is the character I need for that, that man's life. He says what? I learned something from Jacob like that. Jacob was a committed man. He's a man with determination. You know, first president of our country, Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, said, determination conquers difficulties. Determination. Can you say that one to my hearing? Determination is conquers difficulties. I don't know what is facing you. What do you want to become in life? And what is opposing you? And what is standing in your way? Somebody, press on. Hallelujah. You can become what God says you will come. He has, re- he has said it. You can do it. Hallelujah. The next thing that the blessing of God do, does is that the blessing of God makes you rich. Oh, am I there? The blessing of God makes you rich and there is no sorrow. Proverbs said it. No sorrow is added to that. When you are blessed, no sorrow. You know, when wicked man get rich through dubious ways, he's driving good car all right, but there's no peace. But the child of God, as you pay your tithe, as you get committed to the things of God, and God open, God open the door for you, you sleep. You have riches all right, but you sleep and you sleep in peace. And your blessing transcends you. According to Psalm 112, Psalm 112, let's check it from that area. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. When God's blessing is upon the child of God, the man who loves God, hallelujah. I think last three weeks I said that here. We quoted that scripture. Do you remember? Shall we read it? The blessing of God makes you rich and cause no what sorrow. I like the way you put it. That's fine. Praise ye the Lord. Are we ready together? Please, everybody, read. Read with me. I don't like it. <laughs> that delighted greatly in his commandment. Let's proceed. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Three, third one. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endure forever. Clap for the word. Clap for the word. Clap for the word. I like those who are clapping. The blessing of God is upon your life already. The powerful, the, the, how powerful you clap will determine how powerful your wealth will be. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches. How many, how many of you want wealth and riches to be in your house? To be the mark of your family? How many of you want to that? I wish I could raise my two legs. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man whose delight greatly. How, com- how, how, how much do you delight in God? How passionate are you about the things of God? How concerned are you about the things of God? About the house of God? Things that are called God's things. What is your heart about that? It counts. And that causes the blessing to come. Hallelujah. The next thing that the blessing of God does, the blessing of God turns your, your shame into fame. Hallelujah. Maybe I'll end with that one. But because I want to turn the, 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 the paper and go to the other side, what will bring the blessing? The blessing of God turn your what? Your shame to what? Fame. Remember the, um, the woman of God in the Bible called Hannah? How the, uh, the, the, the right, is it? How do you call him? Uh, the second wife, how do we call it? Your rival. Is he a rival? The reason why I'm very careful is that I'm speaking to professors here. And I, myself, I'm a defeated Christian man. <laughs> My English is not proper. So please manage. Okay. All right. Can, can I go ahead? This woman was castigated. 
I think it's a good English. So you should clap for me. <laughs> Look down upon my light and all kind of sanctuary against her. That one is not in dictionary. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, embarrass this woman and ridicule her. And this woman was not having it easy at all. But she went to God. I said, God, turn it. Bless me with a son. And when you bless me with a son, Lord, I will hand over to you. Because the prophets have failed you. A deal, man. Lord, give me a son. And he will be in your house. And God bless her with a son. She hand over. After that, she hand over that son. Bible says God gave her five more children. In addition, her shame was turned to fame. The son that she gave to God became famous in Israel. And if your son becomes famous in Israel, do you think your name will not be famous? Hallelujah. Samuel became famous because when you read the book of Samuel chapter 10, the Bible says, and all Israel believe in Samuel and that, that he's a true prophet of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes people will be having all the blessings, but one blessing, you, one blessing that God will bless you, it will just cover their, the, all their glory. May your story be so. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to tell you, what brings about the blessing? What caused or provokes the blessing. Charismatic will say. But here I put a few things about the blessings of God. But can I use the charismatic one? Alright. The things that provoke. Things that you will do for you to have the blessing of God. One. Your blessing is tied to your divine place. There is a place that God wants you to be. It's not every place that God's blessing is. Hallelujah. Have you discovered your place where God wants you to be? The first place, the first scripture that I will read in that area is that Jacob, no, Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. I'm still in Genesis. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 5 and 12 and 13. Let's read that quickly. I'm left with how many? All right, let's go. And there was a famine. Are you with me? Uh, hello, is, is everybody with me? Let's read. Let's read together. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto, Ga is it Garia? Okay, let's go. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Hallelujah. A particular place. Amen. Let's go. So join in this land and I will be with you. And I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. Verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thee, unto thy seed, all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. How many of you like that? Hallelujah. The first five. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandment, my statutes, and my laws. Clap for the word, people of God. Because he, he said, I will be with you. Be here. Don't move. Verse 12 and 13. Let's look at it. Verse 12 and 13. And what happened to him? Then Isaac saw in that land. What, which land is that? The land God told him to stay. So in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord 
bless you. Hallelujah. The next point, 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Hallelujah. This one, I like reading it in three. But I think more, more three people are here, so I can quote it in three. He said, And obey, obey, and no ye, be ye, can see. Na okoso ye, can see. Onti okosi se obey, or can see. I'm para. May your story be that. Hallelujah. There is a place that God wants you to be. He told them in the book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 20, he said, Behold, I send an angel before you who is t- who will lead you to the place which I have prepared for you. There is a prepared place. There is a particular place for you as a child of God. It's not every place that you have to attend church. It's not every pastor that should put his hand on you. It's not every place that you must send your offering. It's not every place. Sometimes I get mad and I get provoked that somebody will just sit down and just be, you don't study the Bible, you don't know anything, and then you say, oh, baby, I'll, baby, I'll bet you maybe walk me a call. There you, there is a place. Where do you fellowship? When they are calling your family name, they say Samuel Akoto, Akoto family. There is a family in Adan called Akoto family. Maybe it's not Akropon. Maybe you will be deceived by my name. I'm, I'm a Akropon man. No, I'm an Adan man. Hallelujah. So people of God, there is a place. Even in this church, there is a particular, in the place, in your divine place, you discover your divine assignment. In your divine assignment, that is where your prosperity is connected. If you don't discover it, you see a lot of Christians are walking on earth confused. They confess ah, until they are confused. Because the Bible says, whatever a man confess, you become. And they confess, and they confess, and they don't obey anything. They pray, they pray, they move from one prayer camp to another prayer camp. You won't make it. Listen to God. What is God telling you? The voice of the Lord gives you victory. You need to hear this God. What is he telling you? Where does he want you to stay? There is a place for you. Even in this church, there is a department that you ought to be. And you are be designed and you have been wired and there is a gift and there is a potential in you. And there, the blessing of the Lord will come upon your life. Until you don't, until you do that, I'm telling you, you struggle. You say, I've been going to church. And somebody will ask you, how many years have you been going to church? 25 years. And what is your attitude? What is showing in your life? Nothing. You are more than a wedding. There is in your divine place, even what the scripture we read right now, it says, be in this land, sojourn in this land, and I will be with you. Security. In your divine place, your security is guaranteed. If you are not in the place God divine for you, you are on your own. God is not bound to protect you. You can't, you can't bring, you can't, you can't go and look for a, 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 a fight and tell God to come. God say, walk in my ways and I will be with you. In your divine place, you will discover God's purpose for your life. When you discover it, you will. Bible says, when he told him, he stayed there. He obeyed. So one of the points that will bring the blessing is obedience. Obedience. If you prosper in your divine place, your prosperity is there. Your success is there. There are many other sources. So there are other ways in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 1, uh, Joshua 1, 8. Let's read it. It said, let this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Uh, is it there? But I'm quoting it. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt what? 
Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to that, according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good sources. So if there is a good sources, is it possible that there will be a bad sources? Is it possible? Bible said or told me in the book of Psalm 37, it said, don't worry about yourself, people who have made it in their own way. In their own way. People can prosper in their own way. Through a force. You can prosper in your own way. But there is a way God has designed for us as a child of God to prosper. And when you prosper through that way, your, pro- your prosperity is protected. And it can be handed over to the next generation. Hallelujah. But when you do it in your own way, you are on your own. The Lord deliver you from your own way. He said to me in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8, it says, your ways are not my ways. Neither are your thoughts my thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's the God we are dealing with. He that is not calling. He didn't call you to come and do your own thing. He called you to come and do what he wants you to do. And when you do what he wants you to do, he will do what he would like you to become in life. The Lord help us. Your, your, the, the next thing that provoked the blessing of God, I say obedience. He told Abraham, I'm not even bringing a Isaac old. He told Abraham, you can add Isaac one to it. He told Abraham, get out from your father's house. Get out from your father's house. And I will show you where you will be. And Abraham went out. Verse 30, uh, 13. When he told me, he said, I will bless you and make your name great. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Verse 13. Let's go to verse 13. What happened? Immediately, the Bible says, and Abraham departed. Oh, no? Okay. Let me find here. It's, it said what? Verse. Chap- oh, no. What is he doing? Genesis chapter 13. But you, do you know what? Let's read Genesis chapter 12 now. 12. I, I, the, the, the guy is confused. Come back again. Take it easy. Relax. Take a deep breath. Deep breath is good. Yes. No, Genesis 12. Let's go. No, no. Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Take your time. Verse 1. You bring the verse 1. Yeah, let's go. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy father, thy country. And blah, 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 blah. Let's go. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. Are you reading with me? And I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. Look at that response. So Abraham departed. No argument. No argument. His move was just like Paul. Apostle Paul, when God told him, uh, this is in Galatians chapter, 5, Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. It said, when it pleased the Lord, who separated me from my mother's womb, asked me to reveal his son Jesus unto the Gentiles, I did not confess with flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Immediately. Somebody is still struggling. I heard a man preaching on one of the uh, prayer, prayer, prayer lines in the, this, in, uh, uh, what we call them. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. I'm preaching. And he said, God called him to go and uh, open a branch. And he will not go. Up to now, he has no response. And he's preaching. And things that are happening to him is nowhere, it's not comfortable. It is not going well with him, but he's still not obeying. People of God, we still have Jonas in church. Oh. Jonah will prefer to die than to obey God. Hey! Somebody say, hey! Ask the person, are you Jonah? 
he, when he, 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 he joined a boat going somewhere else, and God asked, and, and the people were, he put the people in trouble. After the people throw every good that they were sending to do business, they, they now discover that this, somebody is sleeping over. Let's go and find out. And they call him, say, oh, I'm the cause. And they say, what do you do? He said, throw me into the water. So stop him. And as they throw him, he thinks he can run away. God turned himself into a whale and swallow him. Somebody, God will swallow you. And he, 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 he brought him back. <laughs> Tell him, God will bring you back. Hey! People are stubborn. We have people who are stubborn in the Bible. So when you see people stubborn, don't be, don't, don't be. There was a prophet that God was telling, don't go and curse my people. You remember that prophet? Some of you are Bible teachers who are looking at your face right now. He said, no, he will not bother. So God had to make uh, his own what? Donkey to sleep. Even dog, donkey spoke to him crying, still what? Still fighting. People can be stubborn. So learn how to live with people. Oh. Study human beings and learn how to live with them. Hallelujah. Am I preaching at all? Obedience. And when he obeyed, Genesis 13 verse 1. Genesis 13 verse 1. When he obeyed and departed, the verse 4 of 12, no, verse 1 of 13. He said what? And Abraham went out of Egypt. And he and his wife and all that he had and Lord with him into the south. Verse 12, verse 2. And Abraham became, and Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. How many of you want your story to be like that? May it be so, according to your word. But remember, he obeyed. Obedience. Obedience brings the blessing. And when the blessing comes, riches come, gold come, silver come. What are you here for? In, uh, in America here for? You are chasing dollars. It's fine. I need some. But in all these things, look for God first. Put God's things into your listing as your number one. Because you can never labor for God and go empty handed. Oh, Charlie, yeah, last, last week, a man of God, pastor, an old evangelist looked into my face and was praying for me. And as he was praying, I don't know what he saw in me, but he said, the way you love God, I want to tell you, you, Pastor Koto, that you will never go hungry. You can't labor for God and go hungry. He said, I'm telling you, oh, no, he was speaking fancy. I'm telling you from experience, you can't labor for God and go empty handed. He rewards. People of God, kill yourself for God. Labor for God. Don't walk. When you are coming to church and you are late, be running. Sometimes get out from your car and start running. Sometimes I get bored when you see a believer coming to church late. And he's still greeting people. Eh, eh, queer. And, and, what is that? You joking with God? A, a Muslim, when it's time for him to pray, and you bring money, that you are coming to buy something in his shop, he will tell you, wait. I don't know whether you have to have experience with him. He will tell you, wait. When you say you are going, say, oh, you can go. You can go. Only Christian. Christian will take that. Oh, so it's okay. God is always there. Church girl is always there. Can I bring the money? If even it's God who is bringing the money to me, so I can't. I I I can't be foolish and, and leave the money. And He will take the money, all right, and will not even pay tight. <laughs> then when it gets destroyed, then you say, Ah, Bosom, oh, obey God. Hallelujah. The next thing that you get, you have to do to provoke the blessing of God is that your divine place. That is what I said already. He discovered his divine place. Is, did I say it already? Okay. The next one is your sacrifice. Your sacrifice. What are you sacrificing? 
What are you sacrificing? Are, are, in this church, what are you sacrificing for? Have you sacrificed? Do you sacrifice to come to Reheza choristers with the talent that you have inside of you? Somebody over there that we have, you have not joined the choir yet because you think you don't have time. Praise God. What do you have? And you are holding it from God. We are, remember, last, last, last two weeks or three weeks Sunday, I said, it, I said it here. Let me repeat it. We are, we are to serve God with our talent, with our gift, with our potential, and with our possession, and with our treasure. How many things? Serve God with your gift. There is a gift inside of you. There is a talent inside of you. Maybe you are whatever. There is a potential in you. You have a position in community and in the town or in the nation. Hallelujah. You don't just use it to bully people in church. Uh, don't, don't you know where I'm coming from? Don't you? I'm a gay. Is that? Thank God, by God's grace, this ICGC, people started from the scratch. And now we are getting them. Hallelujah. So that's why we are not afraid of your position. It's what you do with your position. Make me fear you. Hallelujah. Because students, started with students in Bedipa, only dancing. Hallelujah. And then now, some are CEOs, some are powerful judges, some are powerful uh, it's in lectures and many lawyers and powerful people in position. Uh, the other day, I went to a meeting with the main department in the Christ temple. And God was telling them, people, let me tell you, here in this house, if you want somebody to connect you to the UN, there's somebody here. If you want somebody to connect you to White House in America here, there's somebody here. If you want somebody to connect you to the, uh, after our, uh, our party, how do you call our party? Oh, Philip, what is it? Philip Jubilee House or Black Star House? I'm confused. Uh, I think. Want somebody to connect, to connect you there? There's somebody here. Anywhere you want to be, all that we need is your integrity. Because the person that is introducing you, his integrity is at stake as far as your character is concerned. So work on your character. Become, be trustworthy. People don't want to, people don't think about trustworthy as anything at all. I don't know. They are more interested in money. Trustworthy is key. Can you be trusted? The Lord help us. The last one. And I say sacrifice. There was a woman in the Bible called the woman of Zerifah, the widow. So this one I put uh, this here. No, let me put Solomon here. I put Solomon here. First King 13. First King chapter 3, verse 3. Let's read that one together, please. I hope you are getting something. Oh no, I'm not making sense at all, people of God. Why are you you have dull like this? Is the weather having influence upon you? Someone come and make some noise in the house. Say, yeah. Say, I'm getting blessed. Hallelujah. Yes. Solomon sacrifice. It said, and Solomon loved the Lord. I love this part. Walking in the statues of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Let's go verse 4. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Verse 5. And what happened? And in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Open check. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Open check. It depends upon the person who is giving you the open check. If I give you open check, I think you, you, you have to take your time. <laughs> If somebody like Reverend Anadanqua give you a open check. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your pastor is rich, I tell you. It's rich because, eh, last, 
through small, small conversation that we have been sharing on the, on the, on the prayer line, in the distance, I say, wow, this is where this man is coming from. Sacrifice, passionate, determined, a man who loves God. That's how I conclude now. He's a lover of Jesus. Who? He's a lover of Jesus. And such people, don't fight them. Yay! Don't fight them. Oh. You die. Oh. You see somebody who loves Jesus. It doesn't matter his age. It doesn't matter his background. It doesn't matter like fisherman turning into a theologian. You work with Jesus. Don't you know? Peter. Peter. A fisherman turned into what? A theologian. God. Jesus can turn people into anything. Get close to him. Have an encounter with him. Be determined to know him better. Not yourself. Know Jesus what? Better. No Jesus. Solomon sacrificed and attracted heaven. Heaven said, hey, somebody is making something here. Please, angel, go around. Hallelujah. Did you realize that Solomon, David's son, is sacrificed? How can you, king, come and do this? What do you ask me? What do you want? What do you want? And guess what Solomon added? And get, then God, God ran away again. Hallelujah. He realized that the answer he gave to him, Solomon seems to be a man who is what? Selfless. He's not a selfish what? Christian. He said what? Verse, verse 6. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David my father great mercy. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Verse 7. Verse 7. And now, Lord, my God, Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. No, no, not how to go out or come in. Verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. A great people that cannot be numbered and nor counted for multitude. Nine. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. That I may discern between what? Good and bad. For who is able to judge this thou, thy so great a people? Verse 10. Let me end with the 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had taught his king. Hallelujah. And when you read on, you see that God said, Ah! You didn't ask for the, in your enemy's life. You didn't ask that you will be rich. You didn't ask that I should, pro, I should promote you. you what, what will you ask? Are you sure you ask wisdom? Which one? Wisdom. Oh, okay. If I were to be me, I will ask for some amount of money. And I will settle the case for him. And, and, and he said, he have added the thing that you didn't want. Ask you. That tells you how much this person care for the kingdom of God. How much do you care for the kingdom? That's my concern. I will end on this one. How much do you care for the kingdom? How much do you care for the kingdom? People of God, it matters. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. The blessing of the Lord will change you, your name. The name that people call you in the environment, in the place, in the workplace. There's a name. There's a tag on your name. There's the tag on your family. There is an image of your family. But when God visits you, hallelujah, when the blessing of God hits you, they will not call you that name again. I pray that you will come to turn with God and you lay your life down for him. With these points, these few points, Practice three out of it. 
and you will see the beauty of the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord multiply you. The Lord establish you and make you a strong family in the community where you dwell. The Lord deliver you from the expectation of your enemy. Lord, enlarge your cause and cause his name to be great in your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Empowerment and hope. In Jesus' name. Amen.